Ask Reddit by E. Jardart. Suicide Prevention Mega Thread. What sucks a lot for non celebrities and poorer people is the cost of therapy. I don't currently have insurance, and while I know I should go see a therapist about stuff, I can't afford it. I'm sure other people are in that boat. For me it isn't so bad these days because I ended up meeting an awesome guy and getting engaged, but I've had a lot of extremely low points in my life where I could have used professional help. Ding ding ding. We have a winner. This is the problem. By the way, I wish there was a suicide chat line and not a hotline. I don't like speaking out loud to a person about any issues I might be having. There is https colon slash slash line dot org slash chat slash deleted i did this i swallowed a bottle of ibuprofen said oh fuck and went to the er the activated charcoal was not fun but i'm alive and happy 10 years later also side note my idol scott hutchison jumped off a bridge a few weeks ago I can't emphasize enough how much this has hurt everyone who was given hope by the messages in his music. We're all his family and we're all grieving together now. Whoever is reading this, please, please reconsider and get help. I did. You can too. I wish this was up last week. A very close friend of mine committed suicide in the second. She was only 19 and could light up a room when she came in. The worst thing is feeling like I could have stopped her. After work the day before she asked me if I wanted to go out. I didn't because I was tired and had to clean. My heart hurts. Her memorial was yesterday. It's still such a raw wound. I'm sorry I had to get this off my chest. Edit. Thank you all who've messaged me or replied with support and their own experiences. I know logically it wasn't my fault but emotionally it hurts. I'm slowly starting to accept what happened but it will be a while before I'll be back to normal. Also to the Ashat that messaged me and told me it was my fault, go fuck yourself. I hope you know it is not your fault. What an awful thing you have to go through right now. Please take special care of yourself at this time. Almost exactly a year ago one of my best mates called drunk in the middle of the night telling me that he was going to end it, and he wanted to apologize for doing this and thank me for being the only one to support him. I got so fucking scared and started calling people that had been on the same party that he attended earlier and managed to find him nearby walking alone towards the rail tracks. I ran towards him and stopped him, we talked for almost 5 hours straight that night. We agreed for him to try therapy. It worked. At least for him. And now he is on his way back up pursuing a career in graphic design. I urge everyone who feel depressed at least try to talk to someone, your family, friends or a therapist hotline as it might help more than you think. Deleted. I think the biggest problem for me is imposter syndrome. I have a relatively good life and it doesn't feel like I've earned the right to be depressed. As a result I don't acknowledge it or deal with it professionally. That's because depression is a health issue, not a life financial struggles issue. If it were seen correctly as a health issue, we could break the stigma against it. Look at Anthony Bourdain and Kate Spade they seem to have great lives on the outside. Fame and fortune. But health issues can hit anyone, and depression should be taken seriously, no matter what has been going on in your life. Every mental health professional knows this, too. They understand that sometimes, it's harder to get help if everything looks okay from the outside. If you can, schedule an appointment to talk to someone. I'm not a mental health professional, but you can always PM me if you want to chat. I called my doctor today. Time to get this shit sorted out. E should add that this isn't as huge and sudden as it sounds. Been living with this for more than 10 years, and I've been back on medication for a few months now after a full year off them. But things like Bourdain's suicide and Scott Hutchison's in particular, which really punched me in the gut are a reminder that I need to take this more seriously instead of just munching the pills and hoping it'll go away again. 
Thank you for the supportive messages though. You'd be surprised how much of a difference they sometimes make. Good for you. Stay strong. When I was a teenager I had bad problems with depression and anxiety that led to very self-destructive behavior. There were many times I imagined killing myself and one night I was set on doing it. Came home drunk and sad and started cutting myself, which was one of my methods for dealing with my emotions. I sat in my bed crying, trying to find the courage to cut deeper and end it. Then my dog Snoopy hopped up on the bed and put his head on my lap. Thanks to him I realized that I just couldn't do that to him or to my parents and friends. He saved my life that night. The next day I decided to open up to my parents and ask them to help me find some help, which was a huge step forward. Sometimes all it takes is a reminder that someone loves you to help you start trying to love yourself. Deleted. Damn, this thread is heavy. So much pain from so many different people. For what it's worth, this internet stranger is rooting for you. Deleted. No one knows the burden others carry, don't trivialize others' pain. It may seem small to you but it is crushing to them. We all have crosses to bear and they are all made of wood. I was 12 years old when I found my uncle, who had hanged himself with a belt in my grandma's basement. From that day on, I experienced depression and PTSD and I still do. There's not a day that goes by where I don't think about it. I'm 21 now. Nobody from my family reaches out to me, none of my friends do, I've been alone for the last few years and what I would do for anyone to tell me they care about me and love me. But hey I'm still here. I'm still going. I'm trying. I'm stronger. Deleted. I've been dealing with depression for years now but I did try to commit suicide in high school. I hit rock bottom when a family member falsely accused me of raping them. The police, my family, everyone in my life seemed to take their side. The judge ruled that I couldn't stay at my house during the investigation because my little sisters were there and they seemed me a danger to them. I ended up being put up in a shitty hotel for a month while my attorney fought to have any kind of medical exam done to try to prove my innocence. Being shunned by everyone I've cared for got to be too much and I decided I'd had enough. I managed to get a hold of a bunch of pain pills and a fifth of jack and took them all and went to bed. I woke up the next morning in a pool of vomit. In the end though, I'm glad I survived my attempt, things got better. My accuser couldn't keep their story straight and I'm now 2 for 2 in suicide attempts being stopped by my cat. Just at staring and meowing. Always have something or someone nearby, that might just save you. My cat saved me from an attempted overdose when I was 16. Same thing, staring and meowing, she just wouldn't leave me alone. My brother committed suicide at the age of 15 I was 16 at the time. One piece of advice that I can give to those who have been affected by suicide is to talk to someone, I mean talk to someone, whether it be a friend, parent or hell even your dog, just talk. I'm almost 26 now and 4 years and directly after, I buried all of my emotions and refused to talk to anyone, even my family, about it. It has really messed me up both emotionally and with my relationship with people and the world in the long run and only in the last year have I realized this. So, please, just talk to someone, don't be like me. I tried to kill myself at the end of May of this year. I felt like I hit rock bottom, and at the time it seemed like the only way out. I lost the woman I loved, I started drinking every day, I hurt a lot of people emotionally. I thought that if I pushed everyone away, it would be easier to let go. I'm not comfortable saying how I did it. But when I regained consciousness I called a friend who helped me. I'm so glad that I wasn't successful. When I was a young child, my mom and I walked in on my brother unconscious after a hanging and it's an image that is seared into my brain. Thankfully he survived, but I'll never forget my mom's screams of agony, and her pleading with God when she was trying to get him to wake up. The thought of her having to go through that again, ensures that I will never attempt it anymore. Instead of wishing to die in my sleep, 
I'm so thankful for every day that I w. And to the kind stranger on here who has talked to me and helped me, if you ever read this, thank you so much. You have helped more than you'll ever know. I never bothered planning for the rest of my life because I didn't expect to make it through high school. I graduated last week and I'm off to college in a few months. Still can't really imagine staying alive, but I'm not actively trying to end it. So I guess that's good. My plan was to kill myself after high school. Whatever happened I'm not sure what got me through it. But I got through it and regardless of how much I'm suffering now that's still a big win. On Friday I got tired of being tired. It was weird. As soon as I reviewed my plans and checked it would work I felt calm and relieved. I started working on my letters to family. My husband had some friends over already. Everyone was drinking and hanging out. I left the notebook unattended and my 17 year old stepson saw it and asked to talk for the first time in my 8 years of being his stepmom. Him, his girlfriend, and my other stepson had me sit and talk for hours. They told me all the things in my head weren't real. For 8 years all I had was good and bad memories and no way to tell which ones they remember. For a lot of reasons I thought they barely tolerated me. I never thought they would care if I left. If you love someone, tell them you do. Tell them often. It could save a life. Lately my depression's been really bad. It seems like no matter how much I try to reach out no one gives a fuck about your mental health until you're already dead. I'm in the same boat. Everyone tells people who are depressed and suicidal to reach out and talk to someone. I've reached out plenty of times here lately, and I've been getting next to nothing. It really feels like nobody cares until you're dead. A guy is walking down the street and falls down a hole. The walls are so steep he can't climb out. A doctor passes by and the guy says L. Hey can you help me out? The doctor writes him a prescription, throws it in the hole, and moves on. Then a priest walks by again the man shouts, Father can you help me out? The priest writes a prayer, throws it in the hole, and moves on. A friend walks by later the man shouts, Hey Joe it's me can you help me out? So the friend jumps down into the hole and our guy says, what are you stupid now we're both down here and the friend says, Yay but I've been down here before and I know the way out. You are never alone. This comment will get buried, but my brother killed himself on his 24th birthday. He never left a note, and always seemed so happy. He had a ton of friends and I'll never really have an answer or closure. Not knowing why has always been the hardest part. I got treated like shit by family and friends after he died. Everyone treated me like I had some sort of contagious disease. Every time a public figure dies by suicide, I always feel sick to my stomach. In the US, the mentally ill are disproportionately ignored and stigmatized. I really wish nobody ever had to go through a loss like this. Suicide is 100% preventable, yet nobody cares. I tried to kill myself 15 years ago due to chronic shooting pain in my head that no one could diagnose. Luckily I failed and eventually they went away on their own. I have a good life and a great family right now. My son was recently diagnosed with chronic headaches and I've never been more terrified that once he gets tired of living in pain he's going to follow in my footsteps. He is in therapy but I am just so scared. People who are suicidal feel like they can't talk about it with anyone because they will be committed, drugged and stigmatized. We need to have a better outlet for suicide to be discussed without judgment or immediate hospitalization because that is not always the answer. I'm scared. I'm scared for my future because I struggle with depression and wonder what my place in life is. If talented singers, chefs, designers and successful people choose to end their life, what is my fate? A few years ago my dad attempted suicide. He and my mom had divorced, and he wasn't coping well. Drinking a lot, punching holes in the walls, though never any violence beyond that. He messaged me one night while I was getting McDonald's with my then boyfriend. I distinctly remember the fries being perfectly hot and salty for some reason. His message said, I love you, 
for about 20 lines on my phone. I panicked and said we needed to go home. When I arrived, my grandfather was there, along with the police and an ambulance. I was 100% sure he had died. No one would let me into the house or let me see what had happened. Moments later, a few police officers walked him out of the house, helping to carry him since he was so drunk. He was taken to the hospital. When he called me the next morning, he said, I can't tell you how happy I was to wake up today. I'm so glad I failed. <laughs> Deleted. Stuff like this doesn't help me, either, but then this thread isn't for you or me. Even if it helps just one person, it's worth it. I've attempted suicide three times in my life. The first I was attempting to slit my wrists and I was stopped by my childhood friend. The second I had a gun in mouth and I heard my nephew laugh from across the house and amp, I couldn't have him see that. The third I had a cruder gun, picked my location to go out to in a field, went to close all of my bank accounts to leave my money for my family. My sister found my note, told my dad, who is a cop, and his fellow officers picked me up at work and I was hospitalized. Mental illness needs to be addressed. As someone that suffers from it, I know how hard it is to talk about let alone live with. I spent years being silent about my illness. I was ashamed. I thought it was my fault and amp, I should be able to handle it. I was wrong. It cost me jobs, friends, and amp, partners. It very nearly cost me my life. Once I was hospitalized I was finally able to receive the help I desperately needed. I'm still rebuilding. I still struggle. But I can now see a light at the end of the tunnel. To everyone that suffers from mental illness, I see you, I'm here for you, and you are not alone. The world may seem empty. Everything may lose its luster. Just know that there are those who genuinely care for and amp, support you. Even if you can't always see or feel it. My mom was about to commit suicide after getting diagnosed with depression and nothing seemed to help. Before she could go through with it, she walked by the room my sister and I shared, and saw us laughing, we were watching Inside Out, I remember, and she realized how we'll be crying instead of laughing if she goes through with it, so she didn't do it. She hit a rough patch, but she tried ketamine and it really seemed to work her. Huh? She's doing a lot better now. Suicide has touched my life in so many, sad ways. My younger brother was the awkward fat kid. As an adult he struggled to find his footing. He wanted desperately to find a technology job but the breaks that I stumbled upon somehow avoided him. A few years past his 30th birthday he burned down the cabin he rented from our mom with himself inside. I'm tearing up right now thinking of all the cool stuff he missed out on. He would have loved it. We never got to play WoW together or fly quadcopters. I miss you Rick. Yesterday I was drying off in the shower when my wife came home, so I stayed quiet and hid. I heard her go from room to room looking and calling for me for several minutes, even going outside twice, before finally finding me in the bathroom. I asked where you worried something happened to me and she said I was afraid I would find you hanging from the ceiling in the garage. I still don't really think I have a problem. Everyone gets down sometimes. But if someone that close to me is legitimately worried about me, I guess I should probably be worried about me too. <laughs> Deleted. I was suicidal for years, I'm now on medication and I'm much more stable, emotionally. The itch to end my life hasn't gone away, but it's now an impulse that I can control, logic my way out of, and distract myself from. I see so many posts after tragedies like these, saying things like talk to me if you need help, and those are good. But, it's not enough. Seek out people in your life who are depressed or seem off. Listen to them, empathize with them. Don't treat their feelings as trivial, regardless of what you think of their life. Have unconditional positive regard for every human being you encounter. Not everyone who is depressed or suicidal will reach out. For some, it's too hard or they don't want to bother people or they don't think they're worth it. That's where we, the stable people in their lives need to do better. 
It's not our responsibility to save them, or even make them feel loved. It's our job to listen and do the best we can to be a good human being. I've been suicidal for years. Chronic depression and bipolar will do that. My young children keep me alive. I've attempted three times and the first few days afterwards are always surreal. This last time I drove out to my favorite secluded hiking trail and sat in the snow and cried. I cried because I was so full of hope and happiness as a kid and I was angry at myself for letting that child down. On the way back to town I bought groceries for the next week as a way of promising myself to live. Mental illness is fucking nasty but I've never once regretted my decision to keep going. There's still a chance I'll make the child in me proud and that's what I hold on to when times get tough. How can non-suicidal people understand severe depression better so we can look for signs and help our friends and family? I've been struggling with depression and bipolar all my life. It's getting worse now that I'm older. I broke down to my girlfriend about a month ago, bullying. Admitted I was tired of life in general and that I just don't have faith in myself as a person. I feel bland and boring and my social anxiety just always makes it worse in social situations. That brings me to this. I'm out of town this weekend to hang out with my girlfriend's friends and I don't know them too well. I really need help coping and trying to enjoy myself. I'm worried if I don't enjoy myself and let my anxiety get the best of me, I'll spiral even worse when I get back home. From any adjusted person any help? My best friend killed herself in 2009 by walking into the Baltic Sea one morning in midwinter. It is nearly 10 years but I think of her every day and how I didn't do enough to save her. It is cliche to say but she was too sweet for this world, too sensitive and too childlike. I am often very angry at her for leaving for me but sometimes I feel jealous she had the balls to do it, as I struggle with my own feelings of suicide. I think one of the biggest issues leading to this uptick is how incredibly isolated we all are these days. There is no sense of community anywhere. A lot of us are enters so we never develop a sense of community where we live. We're always job hopping so there is no sense of community there. American society is one of hyper-individuality, and people just didn't evolve to function like that. Yeah, we're all in debt up to our eyeballs, we all work crazy work hours for well under what we're worth, we're constantly bombarded by 24 stroke 7 media stimuli, but at least people in the past had their community to rely on when life went to shit. I know the intentions are the best. But posting numbers to a suicide hotline and saying go find someone to talk to are kind of the equivalent of thoughts and prayers after a tragedy. I think we really need to reevaluate the direction our culture is moving. I was just on a train to Cardiff when the train stopped. There was a woman in distress and was possibly suicidal on the next platform. The train conductor called for help and stayed with her because he didn't want to just get her out the way and drive off. Thanks to that kind conductor the woman got the help she needed and is in hospital as we speak. People can complain about the delays all they want but the conductor was so right to stay with her. If you ever read this, train conductor man, thank you so so much. This could have gone a lot worse than just an hour delay. I'm 19 years old and last week I took a fatal amount of prescription drugs hoping to end my life along with a sleeping aid so I wouldn't be awake through it. I woke up violently vomiting and extremely upset because I shouldn't be here. I still think about suicide every day, but not in a really depressed way. I feel more like I'm a background character just going with the flow not doing anything to differentiate myself from others. I think someone preferably multiple people, should go through the thread and answer every plea for help. I can't do it, I'm only 14 and I'm afraid of saying the wrong thing. I've seen a lot of unanswered comments, I just wish every cry was answered. It's my birthday today. Been struggling for 5, 10 years now with severe depression. I don't know how to get better anymore, every time I feel like progress is being made, I get hurled back to earth. I'm exhausted and just hopeless. Nothing has meaning anymore, and if nothing has meaning, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. 
Even escapism has worn thin. I'm just at a loss. Sorry but thanks for listening. I was actually stood on a bridge a few days ago contemplating suicide. I eventually walked away. One of the single best things I've seen on Reddit is this. HTTPS colon slash slash www.reddit.com slash r slash get disciplined slash comments slash 1q96b5 slash i underscore just underscore dot underscore care underscore about underscore myself slash cedar 4 af slash close bracket everyone's situation is unique and shit in its own unique way all i know is that post once helped me see a sliver of light when i was at my darkest it may not help everyone but it might help one of you so there it is i'll be honest the times I felt desperate all I ever wanted was a friend to tolerate me and be patient with me. Someone to share in my excitement and happiness. The problem is that people half-ass everything. No one really commits to anything anymore. A general message. The message of if you're feeling suicidal, contact X is kind of flawed. People who are suicidal depressed have a hard time actually reaching out and getting help. If you suspect someone close to you has issues, reach out to them, don't make them reach out to you. About a year and a half ago, I almost ended my life. I went to the hospital, and came out with nothing different. I tried again and went to another hospital. I came out of that one and got a job. I think it really helped me to have something stable in my life, but I'm not going to lie and say that it's not still a struggle. Since then I've met my amazing girlfriend, but I'm still depressed and life is still hard, but that's okay. Some days I honestly do feel like trying again but you just have to push through. Deleted. Telling users to kill themselves is a violation of rule 8 and will get you banned. Don't do it. I hate that people have to be reminded not to do this.